folks and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman here with you again on another really cold mid-February day. Yesterday we had quite a bit of snow that came in and some freezing rain on top of that. So uh, we decided to take the day off and not work today because the road conditions were simply too hazardous. So I also wanted to take this opportunity to make another video in response to the one that I posted a few days ago. Well, let me also say that to anyone that watched that video and was somehow misled, let me offer my apologies right now because it was not my intention to mislead anyone into thinking that was an immediate solution to the current ammo crisis situation we have. Um, what it was is just a message to relay to you that there are solutions to ammunition shortages, you know. And right now is the time to educate yourself. And I think I mentioned that in the video before, you know, educate yourself about reloading if you're not into it. And if you know someone, whether it's a family member or a friend that knows something about reloading and has the equipment and the components, maybe they can get you started right away, you know. And, and uh, take the time to go online, you know, instead of sitting there and watching it, a worthless show or whatever or or playing another computer game take some time and educate yourself that way when the time comes you can replenish your ammunition supply as you need it for whichever caliber gun you might have you know and as time goes on you can pick up some of the reloading components that you need I realize that right now reloading components are quite as difficult to find as ammunition in some cases even more so, especially primers for example. Primers and powder are just very hard to find. However, I am seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel because I'm starting to see some things trickling in to these gun stores and uh, the primers are still not available but uh, just the other day where there were empty shelves two weeks ago I was able to pick up some pistol powder and they had some rifle powder available as well you know and still at good reasonable prices this one here is uh, accurate number two this one was for thirty dollars for a pound and this one here is a uh, alliant powder this is power pistol it's uh, 25 95 so it's that's a really good price still you know no nope, not really any price gouging going on there as far as I can tell but I was also able to pick up some more 22 ammunition. Here's some Aguila. This is a high velocity hollow point, 38 grains. And it was one box per customer, and the whole shelf was full of it. Okay, There were several of these. This is a 250 count. They also had 500 counts. But I don't need that much, so I just bought the smaller box. And left the rest for someone else that really needs it. But I've always wanted to try that ammunition. I've never actually tried that particular loading. So I bought, you know, one box of it and uh, just to give it, just to kind of give it a quick review to see how well it would shoot in the guns that I have. Um, that being said, I've got some rather dismal news that you probably have already heard about. Um, Joe Biden just the other day announced his war on guns. Okay, we've got a president in office that's actually announcing a war on guns. And he did it in response to the anniversary of the Florida Parkland shooting. And what he was wanting to do, he wants to ban semi-automatic so-called assault rifles like the AR-15 and the high-capacity magazines that go into those guns total ban on them, okay? That, that's a ban on manufacture and, and sale of, or resale of any of those guns. He also wants to impose a 30% increase in taxes on firearms, and I'm assuming any firearm, 30% tax increase, and a 50% tax increase on ammunition. Unbelievable. Unbelievable what this guy is trying to do, you know, and 
I urge you to speak out against that. You know, contact your representative, join a gun lobbying group that speaks on our behalf in Washington. I just joined Gun Owners of America. I used to be with the National Rifle Association, but I think Gun Owners of America actually does more for us. So I join them, okay? We have to have someone that represents us. And just a few weeks ago, I contacted my representative and I got a very nice email back, you know, saying that he would uphold the Second Amendment for our interests. Shooters like myself, law-abiding shooters and hunters, outdoorsmen, you know, and those that want to protect themselves and protect their families. You know, legal gun owners. Because all of these laws will do nothing to curtail the crime problems and the mass shootings that we have here in the United States, or worldwide for that fact. Because you cannot legislate insanity. You simply can't do it. Well, anyway, let me put all of that aside right now and get on to the video at hand. The, what I'm trying to present to you is another solution, and this one is immediate to anyone that wants to get out and do a little target shooting, maybe a little friendly competition amongst friends, you know, and I don't care if you're just going out in the backyard and shooting some tin cans. This is another aspect to shooting that uh, can be used for target practice or for hunting or for target competition. And, uh, you know, it's, it's readily available right now. You can go on the internet and you can find suppliers of these guns right now and the ammunition. And what I'm talking about, folks, is the use of high quality air rifles, air rifles and air pistols, like this Beeman R10 that I've got here. This is one that I've owned for many, many years. It's 177 caliber. It has an advertised muzzle velocity of around 1,000 feet per second. Made in Germany, it was imported by Beeman at the time. Um, Dr. Robert Beeman was an entrepreneur in importing precision air rifles and air pistols back in his day. And uh, he had quite a business, you know, quite a business going on there. And, and this, is, this is why, because people started seeing that these are not the air guns of our youth. You know, these are not the little Red Ryder Daisy BB guns. You know, they're a far cry from that. This one, by the way, belongs to my grandson. <laughs> he goes out and plinks cans with it. But uh, this one here is one of the high quality air guns that's still available. I believe it's called the R9 now. And uh, it has a golden trigger instead of this silver one. And speaking of the trigger, this is their famous record trigger. It's fully adjustable, very finely adjustable. Everything is made out of wood and steel, high quality. And when you pick one of these up, you know, it's like picking up your deer rifle or whatever. Um, it has a precision rifled steel barrel. The power plant is a, a piston inside here with a heavy mainspring that gets compressed when you cock the rifle and is held in place by the trigger mechanism that has an automatic safety. So the way you load it is not like the old guns where you had to pump them up like the old Crossmans or whatever or you had to use a CO2 cartridge which those are still available and there's nothing wrong with them but these are just a few steps ahead of that. You want to pull down on the barrel until it clicks, till it cocks and you'll see that the safety automatically engages and then you load your pellet and you're ready to fire. No pumping, no CO2, and the power plant is right there, supplies the power for you for free. So in order to safely decock this gun, you want to pull down and make sure you have a good hold on the front of the barrel. Disengage the safety, squeeze the trigger, and lock the barrel back into place. Now the gun is unloaded. 
that's a spring piston air rifle. Here I've got a vintage air rifle made by the same company. By the way, this, this one here was bought in Germany where it was manufactured. Uh, the same manufacturer that made the Beeman R10 and I believe still makes the R9 and several other models. This is a HW35. This is, a, like I said, an old vintage gun that I picked up at a pawn shop for $50. Okay, beautiful old gun. Has a European walnut stock. Monte Carlo cheek piece here. High quality recoil pad here. Checkering, cut checkering. All steel construction. This one here has a globe front sight and interchangeable rear sight here. You can actually change the profile of your rear sight, whether you want a U-notch or a V-notch or whatever. It's instantly interchangeable right there and fully adjustable. This gun is super accurate. I can shoot groups the size of aspirin tablets with this gun. It also has a precision steel rifled barrel. Okay, fine old gun. Doesn't have the horsepower that the R10 here does, but it's a very good shooter. And it can be used for hunting or for pest control, things like that. And once you start shooting one of these, it's, it's just so much fun, you can't hardly stop. You know, you get, go out and set up some tin cans or whatever, and you start plinking away, and you, you see just how accurate and powerful these guns really are. Here's another power plant that was introduced several years ago. This is also a barrel cocking air rifle. This one made by Diana, also made in Germany. This is the model 340. And you pull down on the barrel, just like the spring piston air rifles. Load your pellet. Lock the barrel back in place. It also has a automatic safety engagement as soon as the barrel cocks. The difference between this system and ones like this R10 is it does not use a mainspring. It has a piston inside of it, but it has a gas ram system. So you can leave the barrel cock for extended periods of time without worrying about the uh, piston or the mainspring becoming fatigued. You know, you can sit there and go ahead and load the gun and, and cock it and everything and wait for a squirrel to show up or whatever. Don't have to worry about it. And also, once again, to be able to safely decock the gun, hold on to the barrel firmly, disengage the safety, squeeze the trigger, and slowly lock the barrel back into place. If you decide to get one of these, one thing you should never do is while the barrel is cocked to squeeze the trigger while it's cocked because it'll slam upwards very violently and bend the barrel and most likely break the stock right back here. And it could also injure you very, very badly. If you have your finger near the breech area and you, you let go of the barrel and it goes off, it could cut your finger off, folks. So, you know, some safety warnings need to be heated with these guns, just like with a firearm. You know, just plain common sense. But this, this gun here, I've chronographed it as well. It shoots well over a thousand feet per second and uh, is extremely accurate. I mean, I was shooting at 20 yards groups as big as a shirt button. Powerful and accurate. And it also, it's actually wearing an RWS scope here with an adjustable objective here. The one on my Beeman R10 is a Hammers 3x9x40 with an adjustable objective as well. And then another style rifle that you might be interested in is a pre-charged pneumatic. If you go back and look at my channel, last year I took this one out and did some squirrel hunting. This is a very inexpensive rifle. This is the Diana Storm Rider. This one's in 22 caliber 
and it has a cylinder down here that is charged up with compressed air and here it gives you a gauge to let you know how much air you've got left. You can charge it up using a scuba tank if you have the resource to do so or you can do like I did and use a pump like this one. It also has a gauge at the bottom right here with a line to be able to refill your air gun. And each refill gives you about 35 or 40 shots or so. You know, and then you have to recharge the gun. But either way, uh, air is free. You just have to do some exercise there to be able to charge that gun because it takes some, some serious pumping to get that thing back up to a fully charged. Uh, but it has a 22 caliber barrel. They come in 177 caliber as well. I decided to use the 22 because I really wanted to use it for hunting. And in my opinion, the 22 caliber pellet delivers more of a impact and shocking power on on games, you know, small game animals such as squirrels and rabbits. So you'll be able to anchor them quicker. Uh, that's not to say that they're an absolute replacement for firearms, even a 22, because they simply don't carry the same kind of impact as even a 22 short would have. You know, it's just the power is just not not quite up to that level. But it is powerful enough to cleanly take small game and to cleanly dispatch vermin as well. So that being said. Let's take a couple of these guns outside and do a little bit of shooting and I'll demonstrate just how effective these guns can be at uh, 50 yards and then also at 25 yards. So I'll see you outside. Well hey folks, I'm going to do a little shooting out here today. It's about 15 degrees or so, the sun's starting to come out so maybe it'll burn some of the snow off. But I got a few targets set up down here and I'm going to show you just how effective these air rifles can be. This is uh, my little pre-charged pneumatic. We're going to shoot it first off. And I'm going to shoot some steel targets down here at 50 yards. And then I've got a few other little targets, some cans and then some liquid filled containers. So uh, anyway, here we go. We're going to try this one out first. Let me pan down here. Okay, I think you can see those targets pretty well there. Zoom in a little bit more. All right, I see a bunny in the snow down there. Let's see if we can make a hit on him. A little bit low there. Good hit. I see a squirrel up on top of that log right there. That's a solid hit. Hit that bunny one more time. I'm gonna aim for the head. Solid hit. I'm going to go for that can right on top of that liquid filled container. And then I'm going to shoot the container on the left. There. Those targets there were about 25 yards. Folks, that was actually kind of fun. Uh, that shows you the power of these pre-charged pneumatics. And like I said, this little gun here cost me right at $200. That's not including the scope, of course. But, uh, and you'll also need 
a pump to be able to recharge this gun, but you know, it's a lot of good shooting fun that you can have and uh, without using up the ammunition that you have for your firearms. Pellets are cheap and they're readily available. So let me go get my spring piston air rifle and we'll see how well it shoots at 50 yards. Well, I decided to bring out my old vintage Beeman R10 and uh, we'll see how well we can hit some of these targets down here. The way to load them, make sure you keep your uh, breech open. Of course on these you have an automatic safety so you don't really have to worry about it accidentally going off because you have to disengage the safety. I'm going to try some of these super dome round headed pellets. See how well we can hit these targets. Okay, once again, I'm going to try for that bunny in the snow. That went off before I was ready. Try for that squirrel. Okay. I think I'm hitting that target. It's just frozen to the ground. I'm going to go for that liquid filled container. Oh, get to take another shot. Another one. All right. Well, folks, I think you can see that these air rifles are good uh, shooting equipment even at longer ranges for air rifles, 50 yards, which I can shoot further than that. You know, I've shot out to 80 and 90 yards with them. But uh, in most cases, they're a fairly close range deal. You know, you want to shoot, if you're going to hunt with them, 20 to 30 yards, maybe 40 yards, because pellets do lose their energy after a certain distance much quicker than bullets do. But, you know, it's just another way of getting out and doing a little bit of shooting practice so that you don't use up the ammunition that you have on hand right now. So I'm going to go back in the den and we'll discuss these air rifles just a little bit more. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed that little shooting session there. I know it was kind of short. It was rather cold outside so I had to come back in and warm up. But uh, let me also take the opportunity to discuss some of the ammunition that you'll be needing. Um, the good thing about air rifles is that you don't really need any kind of a special license or any anything to be able to purchase these online. They're not considered firearms, so you don't need an FFL in most states. Um, let me also say that if you decide to use one of these for hunting purposes, check with your state laws, your uh, wildlife division, to see if air rifles are permitted. They are in most states, but uh, you know they. 
it's good to make sure that you're up on the laws in your area. So anyway, the first thing I'd like to mention is that there's just as much uh, progress in the evolution of air guns as you can see here. They're no longer the old style air guns like this one here that I've got. This is an old Crossman Model 760. I decided to put a wooden stock and forend on here and restore the gun because this is something from my distant past and it's still a good shooter. I've topped it with a four power scope but you know it, like I say they're a far cry from this here. This one here I think produces around 600 feet per second or so and it has a rifled small steel barrel but it's it's still more of a youth style gun. My grandson likes to shoot it and I mean you can hit targets out to 30, 40 yards pretty regularly with it uh, but you, you have to expend a lot of energy by pumping it up. You know, it takes 10 good pumps to get the full power with it. Much easier to use one of these. And you really don't get the feel with that as you do with one of these air rifles. Uh, but going back to what I was talking about, some of the ammunition that's available, there are so many different styles that have evolved and they've come just as far, if not further, than some of the de air gun designs that are on the market now. Um, you have everything from these round-headed pellets, like these here. These are made by JSB. These are exact, very precise, very accurate pellets. And uh, then you have, here's a, a older box of beam and ram jets. These are used for silhouette shooting to be able to knock over steel silhouettes. And uh, here's the a very, very famous pellet made by RWS. This is also a round-headed pellet. This is a Superdome. Okay. And they're in several different calibers, you know, everywhere from 177 caliber on up to 25. And I know they make even bigger calibers for air guns now, but we're, we're going to limit this to the smaller calibers for the purposes of this video. Here's another uh, fairly inexpensive, but still very good quality air rifle pellet or air pistol pellet. This is also a round nose and it's uh, relatively light so it can be used with lower powered air guns to attain good velocities. Um, also you have flat headed pellets like wad cutters so that you can score at targets uh, rather easily. Here's a, a pellet made by RWS. This is the Hobby pellet, very light pellet, but still extremely accurate. This one's uh, seven grains, okay? Seven grain pellet. And uh, I'll tell you, they're just looking at them, when I open them, I can see that they're very, very well made, good quality. I'll give you some close up shots of the different pellets in the video as it closes out. And here's one that is actually uh, a competition style pellet. These are used quite often in uh, Olympic sports with super high precise target air rifles and air pistols. These are also a flat headed pellet and uh, will cut out a perfectly round hole in any paper target so that scores can be measured. That being said, those flat headed pellets work very well on uh, vermin like rats and uh, other types of pests because that flat head when it hits it, it imparts a lot of impact right there you know at close range. Head shots or uh, abdominal shots in the upper abdomen are very effective with those pellets. Then we get into some of the higher penetrating pellets, deeper penetrating I should say, like this uh, H&N is also made in Germany. By the way, I, sh I should mention, your best quality air guns are made in Europe. You know, England and Germany being the top, in my opinion. Um, this is the H&N Silver Point. This is a very heavy pellet. It's 11.5 grains. 
and it's a pointed pellet and it actually has uh, grooves that go all the way around to be able to seal that barrel to get the maximum amount of pr uh, power from your, your rifle. And with this gun, I've shot at metal cans out to 80 yards using my Beeman R10 and actually blowing holes right through metal cans with this. You know, they're, they're a hard hitting, deep penetrating type pellet. Uh, here I've got a vintage box of pellets that I bought many years ago. These are no longer available, folks. These were the famous Beeman Silver Jets. Okay. And these pellets were actually made in Japan. And they're so precisely made, they, just like the box says, they look like they've been lathe turned. You know. But they're so uniform and so absolutely precise. Too bad they don't make these anymore. But uh, Every now and then I see a box or two available on eBay of this vintage, these vintage pellets. Um, now, there's another type of pellet that has recently, or fairly recently, been developed, uh, and it, it's a derivative of a hollow point, and that's this H&M uh, Terminator pellet. And what they have is a, a hollow tip that act, is actually segmented, like a lot of the firearm hollow points that are segmented so that the petals peel back as they mushroom. And it has a pointed tip right in the middle to aid in penetration and yet expansion as well. That shows you the level of performance that a lot of these air rifles and pistols are capable of, that they can actually deliver pellets that expand just like a bullet mostly used for small game, you know, that's what you want to use these for, and they're highly accurate, they're extremely accurate. Out of my Beeman R10, let's see, I've got a target here, let me show you this target that I shot with it. Here's a five-shot group, okay, that's using an, another type of pellet. But I was getting five shot groups like that at 25 yards, you know, easily shirt button size groups. And then another type of pellet is uh, also a very hard hitter, heavy pellet, is this Barracuda Hunter. This is 10.49 grains for the 177 caliber. get a good picture of that and these really expand well when they hit and uh, here's another group that I've got these here I shot uh, 25 yards with the H&N Barracuda hollow point that's a one hole group right there all of them went into one ragged hole right there at the top I sighted them in slightly high at 25 yards so they'd be just about dead on at 40 yards and uh, they perform very well. Another very famous pellet that is also a hollow point pellet is the Crow Magnum and I should mention that all these are available in different calibers. This one's in 22 caliber. I've also got them in 177 caliber and all of this stuff is available and unlike a lot of the firearm ammunition and firearms that are out there now these are readily available I just got off the internet a while ago and I looked at several different sites uh, and all of them still have air rifles and ammunition and all the accessories readily available and in stock so you know if you want to get into this sport of shooting high quality powerful air rifles like the ones I have here there's no reason why you can't, unless you simply can't afford them, because some of them are a little bit expensive. You know, like the the R9, which is the replacement for the R10. Just the rifle itself is, I want to say, around $400 or so. But, uh, you know, you can pick up, like this Diana here, for around $300. That's without the scope, of course. But sometimes they offer specials with the scopes already on. And like I said, the uh, the little 
Storm Rider here. It cost me about $200, and then I had to buy the pump, which is about another $40 or $50. And the scope wasn't much, you know, it was, I don't know, $35, $40, something like that. So for around $300, you can pick up a entry-level PCP like that, pre-charged pneumatic, I should say. And so anyway, uh, some of the sites that I've gone to are uh, places like Air Guns of Arizona, and uh, Pyramid Air, all of them have warranties on, on these air guns. And if there's any defects, they, they go beyond most measures to try to make things right for you. And I'm, I'm not getting paid by any of them. I'm just telling you from my past experience where I've bought these, if I had a problem like I, I did with the Diana Storm Rider, it had a leak in it, I sent it back and they fixed it and sent it, sent it right back to me within just a few days and everything has been fixed and ready to go. Had no problems with it whatsoever since then. Anyway, uh, what I should also say is the thing about using air guns, you don't have to worry about, first of all, you don't have to worry about an FFL to be able to buy them in most cases. I think Illinois has some strange restriction on certain air guns that have you know that are above a certain power level which is just ridiculous to be honest with you I mean to restrict an air gun give me a break but uh, anyway uh, in most cases you know if, if you want to get into it you don't have any restrictions to have to worry about the ammunition is available you don't have to worry about keeping up with your brass. You don't have to worry about powder, primers, and all that stuff. You know, the power plant is already incorporated into the gun itself. So, you know, what more can I say? It's something that I would seriously recommend if you want to stay in the shooting sports. And if you really want to just get out and you have the urge to do some target shooting, and you have one of these, then you don't have to worry about burning up the ammunition that you currently own, you know, that that you don't want to use up because you're afraid that you're not going to be able to get your hands on it. And uh, they're also a good training tool, training aid for keeping your marksmanship skills up between seasons, you know, so you can get out and shoot and practice with them and keep your aim up and, and your trigger control and everything so that you stay in tune and uh, you don't have to worry about burning up your rifle ammunition. You know, save that for the game that you're going to be harvesting. So in conclusion, let me say I'll, I would also like to say thank you for watching the video. I'm, I'm glad you took the time and came along. I hope that I was able to relay something of value to you. Another advantage to shooting air guns, air guns such as these, whether they be rifle or pistol, is that they're low in noise. They don't make much noise at all they're not like a firearm so you're not going to disturb your neighbors and uh, they're also much safer to shoot because you don't have to worry about a bullet ricocheting and traveling for miles because pellets simply don't travel that far and you can shoot them in a lot of situations where a firearm is simply out of the question you know due to safety hazards that being said though um, make sure you have a safe backstop uh, also, when you're looking for some of these guns and you decide to buy a used gun, uh, you need to really watch what you're, what you're buying because if you buy one out of a pawn shop like I did, I just got lucky to find that one uh, and I was able to do a little bit of repair work on it to get it back into good shooting condition. Um, you get what you pay for in most cases and there's not many gunsmiths that are that really know what they're doing with these type of air rifles. I mean, there there's some out there, but it's good to educate yourself on these and probably to talk to some of the representatives at uh, some of the bigger chains like Pyramid Air or Air Guns of Arizona. And by the way, they also sell used air rifles and air pistols, so you can get into the sport without expending as much money as you would on, you know, some of the higher class models.
some of the pre-charged pneumatics can be terribly expensive. I mean, that, that's for very serious hobbyists. You know, I wouldn't recommend that right away. If you're entry level, then keep it at an entry level. Keep it simple. And I, I guarantee you, if you're a dedicated shooter, an outdoorsman or whatever, you'll find a lot of joy in, in using these guns. So remember that in order to come through this ammunition shortage, we all need to stick together. You know, we all need, we don't need to quibble over our differences about anything. We're all in this boat together, folks. You know, I'm right there with you. And I believe in the Second Amendment and the Constitution, and it's something that should be cherished and respected. So with that being said, try to find some common ground with hunters and shooters out there and, and get together and discuss some of the issues that you have and you know maybe you can come up with other solutions as well. So until next time remember if you like to go hunting, fishing, shooting, hiking, camping, whatever it may be, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do and also remember hit that like button, hit the bell icon and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So we'll see you next time. And best wishes to you and your family. Y'all take care and stay safe out there. We'll see you.